Team Evil Geniuses one game away from elimination from the Intel Extreme Masters in Shanghai. It is Jadon. Lee Jadon, one of the finest, if not the best Brood War Zerg player to touch the game. And he's trying to make that happen here, but... Well, he needs to go into the round of eight, and he is playing up against a former two-time GSL champion in the likes of SK Gaming's MC. That's right. Obviously not having the best of results if for quite a long time. I mean, if we just look at MC as an individual who used to be that two-time GSL champion, the last time he really made a big splash in a tournament, I, I, I mean, depends on what we call big splash. He got fourth at MLG at the start of the HOTS launch. Before that, let's say a final over, well, about a year ago, over to about a year ago, 12 months ago, and for the Obama toss, you know, that's, that's yeah. not, you know, it's not what I expected. No, not really. So, I'm, I'm, I always love, like, it's really heartwarming to me to see a player that's um, fallen out of form pick himself back up again and really crush face. So I'd actually be very excited for MC to take out some, a, a name as big as Jadon to restart his, uh, his comeback trail. I mean, both players are major names. You know, they they're, they're big names. Uh, if you know StarCraft or even don't know StarCraft and you say, all right, you, do you know MC? Have you ever heard of the Obama toss? Yep. And you're like, yeah, actually, yeah. In StarCraft 2, yes. In Brood War, not so much, but he's made a name for himself and he completely deserves the fame and respect that he has. Did you know, uh, you know, we, we talk about MC's nicknames, Obama Toss, yep. President Protoss, whatever his nicknames are. Yep. Do, you know, do you know what his nickname was in Brood War? Uh, it was not very nice. <laughs> Suicide Toss. Yeah. Because... He had the, like a 2-9 or something. He had a terrible win rate, but terrible. every time he'd play, his beginning ceremony would be the slit throat with his hands. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, the, the same thing that he'd done to an Idra, you know, back then. That's right. Um, and he lost every game, so they called him the suicide <laughs> toss because he did that and just lost. Yeah, that's right. But Jadong, I mean, if you put these two players against each other in Brood War, man, Jadong, oh my gosh. I do believe that if this was StarCraft 1 instead of StarCraft 2, it, there would be a severe backhand in the shape of Jadong uh, right across MC's cheek. Yeah, a backhand or something else. Or something else, that's right. <laughs> a, st a stamp of some description. Yeah, you, you take what you you take what you want with the name J Dong, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Dong. They call him that for a reason, guys. And, All right. and girls. So we do have this map here on Neo Planet S, I game love this number map. two. It is a nice map. It is a nice map. I like the multiple attack paths and, yeah. and the golds in the middle. Always making some pretty crazy and entertaining games. And crazy and entertaining is what I'm all about. It's also very stressful for the player that's defending because he moves out with his army one side and then he gets attacked from the other. Yeah. He doesn't really know which way the opponent's coming. So it is very important on a map like this, as you see in the middle of the map, the inner circle, the inner center, you need observers, you need overlords, you need links, you need something to spot always. Because yeah. that's all high ground around the middle there. You can hide yeah. things up there. It's like, uh, you know, Something you need to be careful of. And Jadon, you know, can hide over overlords and stuff like that up there, which MC won't be able to see, obviously. But, uh, yeah. In the meantime, bit of a lull in the action. This is still PvZ, regardless of the expansion. It is quite uh, featureless in the early game, unless there is cheese or craziness. Jadon just having a look, keeping an eye on this wall. It's a very Wings of Liberty wall. It's actually, I was mentioning to Todd that when I played Protoss on this map, I yeah. found it hard to wall in that uh, that choke between the natural and the outside world and the Planet S. It is difficult. It you is. have to do it. You have to p place your pylons precisely. That there's no. All right, I'm gonna put the pylon here, and hopefully this makes a wall. Yeah. Because it won't. It or, the, or it makes a full wall. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be very careful with that. And yeah. You don't. You don't want a full wall. But. Neither big players have made any commitments to anything well, apart from MC, who has got plus one. Yeah. Jadon got his gases down at six minutes, which is okay. It is a little bit late. It could have been a little bit early. 5.45 is comfortable. Six minutes means later speed by, what, 15 seconds? Seconds mean everything in a game like StarCraft. But with MC, plus one attack. What is he doing? He yes, hasn't, he's got no he gases. Is it a third or is it extra gateways? I think we might be seeing it after this Overlord goes away, Apollo. I feel like he's going to try something pretty cheeky here. Well, he's just throwing down oh, the Nexus on wow. his third. He had a pylon up, didn't yeah. he? The pylon a good indicator that he probably should be taking that Nexus. It also could be a fake, though, so you can't yeah. just look at it nice and easy. And MC is that guy that used to fake stuff. He'd make the Nexus oh, and then man. cancel it, and then all of a sudden, 7-gate all-in. 
That guy, that guy was uh, the pain for many a Zerg player back in the day, and not just if you played him, he influenced a lot of style. He did, and that came on the ladder as well, which made me sad as a Zerg player at the time. Made a lot of people sad, man. But layers first, before Zergling speed here, so it is a quite fast layer. Traditionally, Jadong, or traditionally Zerg, do like to throw down the Hydralis Den straight away from this fast layer. Yep. Hydral is just the best all-round unit, good versus gateway units, good versus immortals and whatnot. Great versus Stargate units. Does he have a Swarm Host plan, though? Possibly. He is getting plus one ranged attack, which could be good for Swarm Host and for the Hydras, so... It could lead into, e into either. They both complement each other. We'll see now as the Laird does finish up. It's like now that he throws down the Spy, I'm like, oh, god damn it, Jadon. <laughs> but uh, it should be the Hydral Den there or the Infestation Pit, so there's the Hydra Den. But at this point, a very fast third from MC. He's wrapping it around with gateways, and he just we know MC, base. man. If it's not Blink, it's a mass gateway attack. Yeah. And his gateway account is rising. It is. He just made five gateways while we were looking at that Hydra Den. I mean, three there. You've got a couple more in the main base. Four there, seven in total, and then the eighth on the natural. Yeah. Plus one attack is done, and there's no robotics facility. Twilight Council. Any longevity in his game is just very stagnant at this point. It's just on gateway units. Yeah, he's going to go straight up for a huge gateway attack. It's pretty obvious at this point. Uh, Infestation Pit going down for Jadon, which is very helpful against gateway units. But, um, you know, if he has to go for Swarm Hosts, will he have them out in time? I feel like yeah. probably not. Swarm Hosts is great. They, you know, he's got no observers, so it, it is really good. But that means he has to save and bank gas which means the upgrade for the Enduring Locust, that means building the Locust, the Swarm Host, sorry, themselves. So I think the best possible way for Jadon to deal with this attack is to just keep on building Hydras. Anything other than that is a commitment of resources, which he may not see the benefit from. Look at all those sentries, man. MC has, he's already got nine sentries in his army, and he's moving across with them now. Jadon's seen the gateways, though. He's seen it all. So he shouldn't invest in anything else other than units. He's seen it all. And so he is. He's 20 supply in the lead, but can he defend against the inevitable? He knows what's coming. He just made nine roaches, a few hydras, plus one, just about to finish with Jadong. I'd like to see some static defense from him as well. I don't see any just yet, but uh, just going to have to rely on units here. All right, let's see if Jadong's going to be able to control this well. Roaches at the front, hydras at the back. How good are the force fields going to be? Time warps also pretty important. He's going to have about a million force fields, maybe a million and ten. I, I'd love that amount. That's and so many force fields, my god. Here we go. It's about to begin. Time warp one, time warp two. Force fields coming down. Can he do it? No zealots at the front. They're actually a bit useless at the moment. The Hydras are doing good damage from the top. And Jadon coming from the bottom as the force fields start to dissipate. And the sentry's actually getting under siege as well. He's losing those precious, precious force fields. Oh, Big Daddy Dong's here. He Big is. Daddy Dong is here, and he's pushing this one back. MC now forced to retreat off creep, losing his pylons, losing a lot. Yeah. And if you look at what MC had to sacrifice to push out this with this attack, no Colossus, no Stargate units, no Phoenixes to pick up the Hydras anymore. He has Blink on the way, but now Jadong, with plus two attack, the Infestation Pit coming down again, a little bit weird, a little bit of a mistake, double Infestation Pit, but, you know, that's just like, all right, now it's time to tech up, yeah. now it's time to do this, now it's time to do that, which is the mentality you get in as a player, but he does cancel it, does realize, smart player. Yeah. And there's the Swarm Host play again. A unit that can be very, very frustrating for Protoss and, and um, you know, other, or just mainly Protoss to deal with as it's, um, I guess, more prevalent in ZDP than any other matchup. I have seen it in ZBT, but not so much. And I've seen it in ZBZ as well. And I've got to say, uh, you know, as legitimate as it can be, Swarm Host versus Swarm Host is kind of frustrating. Yeah. And then with, with it's Swarm Host versus Swarm Host and Zerg versus Zerg with Roach Hydra is a game of tug of war. Yeah. It's like if like one guy war, slips. War and he loses his footing, the other guy has an edge, but then all of a sudden he gets back up and pulls it back. It really does depend. Like, if you manage to kill a couple of Roger Door Hydras, that's the equivalent of some guy breaking on your tug of war team, because once that momentum starts to swing, oh boy, does it swing in Roach Hydra Swarm Host play. That's right. Speaking of Roaches, we got these Zealots being swatted away from Jadon. Jadon actually doing a great job at swatting away MC this game so far. MC Jadon's just looking for any hidden hatcheries. This is another good map for hidden hatcheries. A hidden bases. Yeah. In the corners. Right. But that pylon going to be used for reinforcements. Does have a dark shrine on the way. That's MC's kind of way back into this game if he's able to pick up the full hatchery Ooh. or something along those lines. Interesting. Dark shrine just finishing now for MC. Didn't get that warp in. But he's guarding a warp prison. He's not done with the DTs. Yeah. He's going to have to make them work. 
And Aspire on the way for Jadong on the other side of the fence. Well, Jadong definitely looking to tie this game up at this point. Is quite a considerable lead. Yeah, definitely. He has the Hive on the way. He's got a lot of Swarmos. As long as he doesn't mess up with them. Does have good creep spread to be able to move his Swarmos back and forth quite easily. Some Zealots are breaking away from the main pack, the main army. I like this uh, Swarm Host. You bury, make a bunch of Locusts, then unburrow and use those Locusts as a buffer between your uh, your force movement and, um, you know, these Locusts, he didn't expect them to make it very far or do much damage, but they're just a good buffer. Yeah. Oh, they're I like oh, so good, actually. So good. And there's a nice blink there. He's going to be able to snipe this hatchery most likely, although Jadong is pulling a lot of his units back from his attack to try and deal with it. Some static defense here, but that is a lot of zealots from MC. Yeah, this, this third's not, you know, going to... Well, this fourth is down. The third's in a bit of pressure in that north situation there. It's, it's a lot of zealots. And two bases going down. Well, MC didn't lose a base here, which is very questionable. He kept all his probes alive. Yeah. Jadon coming back to defend without actually killing anything. And now units in the main base. Oh. Is Jadon gonna lose his lead? He is in su he was he was in such a good spot, man, but yeah, it, it, it's he's lost that hatchery. The main he's is on under two siege base. still. He is on two base. And that's devastating when your Protoss is actually heading up to four. And now Jadon I mean not Jadon, sorry, MC just needs to focus on one thing, and that's killing the army. If he kills the army of Jadon, Jadon does not have what it takes to rebuild. Not by being down by a couple of hatches at this point, or not least until he gets them back up and running. That's but right. does MC have an army that can beat this? I don't. I, I don't think he can. Possibly not. We got some lurkers coming in, and wailing on the production of MC, and they're going to go straight for the third nexus when they're done with that too. All MC right. sending his forces around, trying to get something done here. Jadon continuing the assault on the third as he's uh, yep resuming that attack. He's resuming that attack, but ideally he'd like the Colossus, which is why he's got Ooh. two robotics facilities coming into play. DTs have been warped in, though. We've got, you know, Zealots at the north, DTs on this side. And Hatchery cancelled again going down. These DTs can actually focus down that other Hatchery again, putting Jadong again on two base. And even Oh, no cancel! Uh, no cancel. He does have 1,600 minerals, but at this point you need every mineral you can get. As MC keeps the pressure up, buying himself time. He's getting Colossus, which is how he can deal with the army of Jadong. Yeah, it's hard to deal with Swarmhost with just Blink Stalkers and Zealots. It's really just... Oh, that's that's oh. going to hurt, though, as MC's running out of minerals and gas himself. He doesn't have that too much backed up in his main and natural, and especially gas. Yeah, and this siege of the Swarmhost on the third is starting to really break through and do serious damage to MC now. Yeah, he's going to lose that third Nexus if he's not too careful. His Colossus is starting to come out, but Thermalant's going to take a while. Jadon may have got his opponent too far down, too far behind to recover, even though MC is having a valiant effort to do yeah. so. Jadon is up a lot of supply, Apollo. That's 70, uh, well, around 70 advantage for Jadon. His army supply is more than double the supply of MC's. And the third Nexus does go down. Yep. That's a big blow. That's right. And now MC is in a spot of bother. He doesn't have the gas income. He doesn't, well, you know, Zealots aren't going to do much. 12 Zealots aren't going to do much at this point, so he needs Gas to be able to build the, the to use his minerals to build the Colossus. Yeah. The Colossus is so important for him right now. If they go down, that is the game. Nine more drones coming in here for Jadong, trying to get over towards establishing a third base, so he's going to leave some units to make sure he can. But meanwhile, another attack here from Jadong, suffocating MC's economy. He's preventing him from taking a third. Oh, oh Swarmhost. Swarmhost flank there. The Locust coming out just at the right time for Jadong to get some good shots off. I oh, all these probes! Ah, it's going to hurt. The base gets cancelled as well. Viper's coming in to deal with the Colossus. So even though MC's tried to build an army to deal with these Swarmos on this right-hand side here, Vipers are going to deal with the Colossus. Uh, time warp's going down, making it a little bit hard to start a step for Jadong, but looks like Jadong just has too much. He's been playing so well this game. Tearing through the forces of MC. A warp in from the top, though. Going to flank him and uh, dissipate him for now. But Jadong is still not in a terrible spot. Jadong is not. Look at MC though, he's caught off a lot in supply though, isn't he? He's he caught has, off a yeah. lot of those Roach Hydras. And killing those hatcheries over and over has been great for him as well. But still, 80 supply to 39. Jadong contains MC away from expanding at this point, which is going to try and you know, try and happen again. Yeah. But with the addition of Vipers. <laughs> These Colossus were looking for the Swarm Hosts. And yeah, like you said, the Vipers are on the map now, which is very, very dangerous for MC. Once, uh, well, it will be dangerous when Jadong has a bit more of a ground army. 16 roaches, not that impressive. 
Yeah, I mean, with the Vipers coming up to full energy, uh, that that's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with. Absolutely. On full energy, they, they pretty much have two abducts each. Yep. Four, which is the full Colossus. J-Dub's going to be feeling pretty good at this point with his uh, army composition and the fights that he's been having with MC. He, he's seen what MC has, and yeah, I think he's feeling pretty good. All right, let's find out, though. Does MC's army warrant a place in the round of eight? We'll have to wait and see. MC, all MC needs to do is get a really good engagement here, take out these swarm hosts, and he will uh -oh. be looking at round of eight. But that's it, though. Oh, the get over here, the scorpion maneuver, and the and two Colossus go down for absolutely free. Yeah, and well, the others are getting chased as well. One third. gets picked up, oh. and that's going to fall down as well as the second as well. So that's three in total, almost a four. And there's the fourth going down, oh. nearly down from the Roaches going up near the front. Yeah, the DTs and Zealots really caught Jadong off guard there, but more and more units coming in. Jadong just needs to go back, get more energy on his Vipers, and come in again. Yeah. MC actually needs to be careful here. <laughs> Those locusts are uh, surprisingly strong. I mean, MC's trying to get a base up at the uh, the bottom here, the 6 o'clock base. Yeah. But Jadong, being the player he is, is just going to send a couple of units down to that 6 o'clock base just to make sure that MC doesn't have an easy time getting up another Nexus to be able to mine from while keeping the pressure on. Whoop. Yeah, bye-bye. Oh. If that only a couple more seconds. If only. Oh, no. Oh, the, the, that's wow. the main army, though. Oh my god, losing a lot of swarm hosts here. The roaches do arrive just in the nick of time to save a lot of them. Oh, that was a bit intense there for Jadon, but he is going to pick up the last couple of Colossus. And with the last couple of Colossus coming down, there is nothing to protect this Nexus. Yeah, there's some feedbacks on the in on the Vipers, which is nice. And he has a DT as well, but that is a dead Nexus, and he has lost the, the backbone of his forces. The Colossus are dead. And now MC is in trouble. He's got no income, really. He's got that south base, but that's only been able to afford an assimilator and a pylon. Jadonk really increasing the heart rate of all his fans worldwide at this point. Because if he'd lost this game, if he'd made a mistake, he would have oh, been out. Look at that army supply. I think that Jadonk's fans are starting to get yeah. wiggly and jiggly in their chairs, maybe flipping them up and down. They're going to be feeling pretty good right now and looking like he's going to tie, tie the series. Definitely on the cusp of tying the series yeah. and uh, keeping his uh, round of eight dream alive. Yeah, Jadonk's going to move into this and it is going to be a GG called out from MC.